Hello, iFail3 here. This is just going to be a quick overview of how I've done a little bit of anodizing. Not going to be a tutorial, but I'll go through a few of the steps with you. Hi, okay, iFail3 here. Um, just thought we'll do the boring bit and, well, it could be classed as boring, but a lot of this information is what you're going to need to actually get going anodizing. So um, on the video, I apologize, I had a fever, flu, uh, bad sore throat that absolutely killed whilst trying to cough. Um, I was just not very well, so the image quality, my old, old overall well-being and my sound and everything was just a load of rubbish, so I apologize for that. Um, but I'm slowly learning on these videos and I'll try to get there. So anodizing to start off with uh, the ingredients, uh, ideally you could do with 98% sulfuric acid. Um, uh, 10 litres is what I used of distilled or deionized water, plastic soda granules, uh, Dylon dye 5.8 multi-purpose. Now it's got to be the multi-purpose cold wash, um, apparently none of the others will take to the anodizing process. Titanium wire, that has to be pure. I would uh, next time make sure that the hole I put the titanium wire in was uh, very small so I could just jam it in there or use some sort of screw. If there's any gap, you're more likely to get the arc in, uh, which I had a lot of problems with. Lead flashing, well, we all know where you can get that from. Uh, baking, well, actually, you know, don't go nick it off any churches or anything, but what I mean by that is um, off the internet, um, B&Q or those sort of hardware places like that but it's uh, reasonably expensive, but it should last you for a very long time. Now your baking soda, that's just for safety. Uh, uh, baking soda, uh, what's the other one? Bico bicarbonate of soda uh, mixed with water, very high strength solution, just in case you spill any acid. Gloves and eye protection, now this is very important. There was a part of me in the video when I took off the um, anodizing before I put it into the dye and I wasn't wearing any gloves. Uh, later on, I did find that I had splashed myself on my um, forearm and didn't think nothing of it at the time. I don't even think I recognised it. A bit later on, I felt a burning pain and it was uh, had a nice little scab there. Now, this was at 15% sulfuric acid. If it was any higher, 98% sulfuric acid, I definitely would have felt it and I probably would have had to go to A and E. Now the air pump, uh, now that is um, an aquarium air pump. I did have the aquarium air filter in there to start off with, um, but I didn't bother with that. It's just uh, the, it works by pumping air in and as the air goes up, the water goes through a filter sort of thing. I didn't obviously have the filter on there, just using the plastic. Generally, most plastics are quite safe with sulfuric acid, but just check online to see what plastics you are. My um, bath that I made my anodizing tank out of was, uh, what was it, PP? Um, polypropylene, I believe it is. Uh, don't take my word for that, I'm not too sure. Um, it's the annoying one that you can't really stick to and it's sort of, you can't really cut. A lot of plastic containers are made out of this stuff or either, you know, HDPE and all that sort of stuff. But just, just double check on the plastics you're using. Um, I, I used a silicon air, air hose that just went in there. Now, apparently silicon and sulfuric acid are not a good combination, but they seem to work okay for me. And the water heater was an aquarium water heater there. Now, it did have some like uh, like nice little round sort of stickers on it as it went up and the sulfuric acid solution did start peeling them off. Uh, I, I kind of wondered why I had like these little round scales in there and then I realized what that was. Let's get back to the sulfuric acid and the caustic soda, possibly soon in the UK, you're gonna find this very difficult to get hold of. For one reason is because there's a lot of idiots out there throwing it in people's faces. Um, so I managed to get my sulfuric acid off of Amazon, I believe, out of all places. I thought they would have been quite um, quite strict, but they, that was the cheapest and easiest place I could get it, get it from without too many questions being asked. Now this, this sort of does raise like concerns and I agree the government needs to put um, a, a good strict sort of guidelines on selling sulfuric acid but it's going to make it a damn sight harder for us to anodize things for genuine genuine reasons. 
Um, so let's go down to the ratios. Uh, you want 175 grams of 98% sulfuric acid to one liter of the ionized water, and that will give you a 15.5% solution. Uh, acid um, is um, measured in weight when diluting it. So just make sure that that is definitely grams and not milliliters. But yeah, you can then add it to one liter of water. Always add your acid to the water. Do not do it the other way around and leave it overnight as the uh, reaction when you add the acid to the water tends to heat up the solution. So then you want to leave that overnight. Your dyes are um, uh, mixed up uh, one litre of water. Um, again, deionized water um, to one of the dye sachets and it apparently lasts for about four usages and you want this about room temperature. Uh, no higher than 45 degrees Celsius as you can start sealing your part that you're anodizing before the dye goes inside. Clostic soda, um, the, these are kind of like the wrong way around, but the clostic soda for um, for etching and for cleaning your aluminium piece wants to be about, well I did start off on one dessert spoon but I upped it to two dessert spoons of clostic soda granules in one pint of warm water um, and that can be normal water at room temperature. This here is your ratio that they sort of do recommend roughly using and that is the cathode which is the lead um, or you can actually use aluminium um, should be uh, one part to three parts the piece you're anodizing which is your anode therefore that's why you be it's called anodizing because you're using the anode um so if i had a bit of uh, okay let's let's do this nice and easy so i said a, a three foot piece squared of um aluminium that i wanted to anodize my cathode which would be my lead wants to be about one foot squared um, now, I don't think this rule is a, is a rule of thumb. I think it's just vaguely put out there. There's, there's other, other, other formulas and it's kind of like the other way around. Um, but I think that's more for using other methods of anodizing, not the 720. Like I say, I'm a bit vague on this whole anodizing thing. I've tried to get my head around it as much as possible. I'm not going to be doing it professionally or anything like that. It's just something I've always wanted to dip my hands in and, and, and try. So um, with the 720 solution, um, 720 ratio method, um, it's kind of like one amp per 50 square inches for 240 minutes. If you had um, a less lesser square inch piece to be anodized, you could go one amp for 25 square inches for 120 minutes. So you can half that. I also noticed I could half the um, amperage. So say I only had here, say I had half an amp here. So let's go this, like half an amp for 25 square inches. Then that would be 240 minutes. Okay. And it's going to be around 15 volts. They do say it can get up to anywhere between 18 volts later in the process, the time. Later in the time, that's what it will go up to. Um, but I, I didn't find that on my piece. Now my piece wasn't the greatest of pieces. Um, as it turns out, as you can see in the picture, there it was some bits to start off with, like and or bits in the end of it where the anodizing didn't take effect. Now that could have been um, other fragments of metal. The metal I was using, the aluminium I was using, I haven't got a clue what um, a series of aluminium it was. So it could have been lumps of anything in there. From when I was hammering it and bashing it, it could have been small little lumps and fragments of steel going in there. And of course, that would not anodize. Talking of um, your anodizing bath, you only want to go anywhere near that solution. It's going to want to be aluminium, um, titanium, pure titanium and lead. You cannot put anything in there with steel or tin, which I found out when I've done my heat sink. Well, I kind of knew it before, but I totally forgot about it. Um, we had some screws snapped off. I soldered over the top to get a nice flat finish. You cannot put that in your anodizing bath. I think what happens is it contaminates the acid solution and you get less of a, a better end product with it. Ideally, you kind of want to know your aluminiums that you're working with when doing it um, because some aluminiums are not as good for um, anodizing as other aluminiums. So here's a couple of good links. So we've got thefinishing.com. I recommend that site. It's not the easiest of sites to work your way around. Um, I've got to admit that, but the information in there is second to none. So 
this, this guy here, this, this is where I got my solution from. He, he's saying um, 165.3 grams per litre, and that will give you about a 15% solution. Okay, so um, also another one is astroneutral.org. Now this guy here, and I'll put the links at the bottom, he has done an awful lot of um, home anodizing as a hobby. He's got um, bits about the anodizing process, the introduction, first experiments, results, uh, making things better, bits about dyes. Absolute fantastic page. Um, is 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 got great information on there. I really recommend you to have a good look through all that. Some of the bits around here, like the nitric acid, I don't believe you could get that in the UK. Um, not as a as a pure as a pure nitric acid. I think you can get it mixed with other things. Again, I think uh, that that's one of the big restrictions on that acid. Um, I'm not too sure if you went up to an, like somebody in the industry and said this is what you want doing. Whether they'll give you some. Um, illegally, I don't think they should do, but um, whether they will or not is a different matter. Next one is caswellplating.com. Now on here, this, um, I won't go through this. Okay, you've got square inches here, the size of your part in square inches. So say I was to add in, we had one bit that was uh, one square inches, um, and it will recommend one amp of DC. So if we had another bit and I said it was about 11 square inches. Calculate 11 amps DC. Hmm. Uh, you see, oh, sure, is that inches or foot? Square inches, and the size of your in square inches. Well, in square foot, it gives you 45 square inches. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay, so um, rectifying. Ah, uh, here we go, that's because we was on chrome. Let's go down here and select aluminium and calculate that. There we go, so. The bit that I wanted it was about 11, so I rounded it up to 12, I believe. We'll calculate that, and I rounded that up to about 0.5 amps, um, what I needed for that. So that, that's that's a good rough guide, and also, obviously, we're using a 720 rule. So um, here I said, what did I say? So it's a 12, uh, 0.5 amps, peak voltage, uh, 15 volts DC, but mine never got to that. I think it got to about 9.2, maybe 10. Um, again, the current density, I think that's uh, the part of the formula for working out your amps per feet. I ain't got a clue about that. <laughs> so, um, but again, that's, that's another good, it's, it's, it's a good website. It's got a good little tool there as a quick reference. Uh, again, none of this is um, a tutorial. It's more of what I did um, to try and help you guys out. If you can see anything that I could do to make a lot better, please feel free to comment. So everything needs to be well ventilated. Um, obviously, we are mixing um, chemicals together that uh, gases will then be a byproduct of. Um, anodizing, you've got your water, hydrogen and oxygen. And obviously, if it's in a confined space, could potentially cause an explosion. Uh, so keep everything well ventilated. Also the caustic soda, apparently the fumes from there when you're dipping in your aluminium is, is quite potent. Personally, I've done it outside and I went to have a little whiff of it just to see how bad it was and I couldn't really smell any difference. So preparation, we want to clean, clean, clean and clean in hot soapy water. We're in rubber gloves for five minutes. Now on the video, I wasn't cleaning that often. Um, like it shows me not cleaning that often. There's a whole lot edited out. Um, you want to wear your rubber gloves and that will stop any fingerprints or uh, organic matter getting onto there um, which will then also stop the process of anodizing. So you want to rinse it in clean water, you don't have to do it in um, deionized or distilled water here, this bit's fine. So then we're going to etch the part in the caustic soda solution for 10 to 20, 30 seconds or longer if a matte finish is desired. I, I went a bit OTT on mine and left it in there for a good couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> and yes, I've got a matte finish. Um, I wanted to make sure it was definitely clean. Uh, it wasn't, I didn't really need a shiny finish, to be honest. Um, so then it, when, once it's done, it should start to become slightly gray and will fizz when you lift it out. And that is true. That does do that indeed. Um, and then rinsed it in deionized water. Uh, so to anodize it, um, you want a, a good anodized surface will have a slightly milky appearance when it's ready for fixing. Fixing is another word for adding your dye solution into the anodized part. The acid wants to be around 20 degrees Celsius and aerated. Now the aeration I think helps to cool the solution down. It also creates agitation in there, um, which 
will and the 20 degrees celsius will sort of help the process go along through there's probably some scientific thing of atoms and electrons flowing around and I'd, yeah but whatever um and then ramp the vol voltage up slowly if possible now also again with mine um I, I tried doing that um i was getting a few sparks if you know if it went in too quickly um you just got to play around with it i played around with mine the first night and it wasn't going anywhere so the second night um the second day i sort of managed to get a reasonably good piece of anodizing going on as as far as i can say reasonably good um definitely not anywhere near professional um so then you want to rinse it in the ionized water again so the dye solution wants to be no hotter than 45 degrees celsius if it is it will start to then seal the part that you've just anodized now the whole part of dyeing is to um get the pigments of dye when you anodize in you open up little sort of pockets um or in in the metal cavity a cup of thousands thick or depth or whatever and your pigments will go inside of there they'll flow inside of there and then when you seal it it will then close them up and that's how it it keeps the color in there so you want you want to dip it in the chosen dye for about one to 15 minutes depending on how much depth of color you want so if you're using like um a black and you de dipped it in there and lifted it out after a couple of seconds or whatever it, you'll probably get more of a grayer finish um uh so it's just kind of like your contrast the longer you leave it in there, the more contrast of that colour you're going to get. Um, so I, again, they recommended by start steaming the part um, first to help seal the, the the outer layer, and I think that's that's supposed to kind of help the uh, the the sort of the 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 these little pockets close up um, and real trap in the. Uh, the, the dye pigment before it goes into the water which could theoretically wash out some of that so then you want to um, boil it in the part uh, boil it in distilled water for 30 minutes to seal um, after seal the surface so then this, start the water about 95 degrees celsius here we go i'm not very good at doing this um, and bring up to simmer and boil over a course of a few minutes and apparently some of the leak, uh, some of the dye will leak out into the water before the surface is sealed. And that's apparently not much of a problem. You're just losing a bit of your color. So that's kind of like the method, uh, that I used. Um, so now let's see the video and go from there.